Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the channel again. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. This marks the start of season eight here where we're gonna jump into live data, exploring why it is so powerful and so helpful, uh, especially in the MVVM architecture, and just the best way to go ahead and design your code around that pattern. If you missed it in the last season here, we went ahead and actually communicated to a Firebase project to build up this entire uh, UI here. We can kind of scroll through a bunch of different things. Uh, we can click on one and get to a more detailed version here with loading states, uh, navigation, all that kind of good stuff. So if you are coming from that series, please drop a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link a card in the top right Again, that is to communicate with Firebase there. So that was a lot of fun to build out. Thank you for all the support there. Um, so behind me here, you can see that we have just the main activity. We have a main activity view model. It's pretty empty at the moment. And the activity main XML. And I've just modified it very easily here to allow for a text view in the middle and then a little button here that doesn't really do anything. Other than that, the only thing I have included here is the uh, build features view binding true attribute. Uh, so that we can make use of the view binding inside of our activity class. And uh, that's about it. All this code will be available in GitHub. You can find a link to that uh, repo in the description of this video. So check it out if you're interested in that as well. So let's take this simple example here where if we click the button, we go ahead and just generate a random number. We print that number out here. We update the text view here. Uh, so let's go ahead and bounce over the code and make that happen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this inside of a function here so we can declare a private function, uh, get random text, let's call it, and then of course this function will return a string here. I will have this function return the random from the java.util package to uh, get the uh, an integer here. So let's just call it next int and let's give it a bound of, I don't know, let's just say 100 and then we will call to string on that as well. Uh, so this function is pretty straightforward here. And then what we can do is inside of our onCreate, we can put an onClick listener here for our button. And then we can very easily just say binding.textView.text is going to be get random text, right? So every time that we click this button, we're going to run this code, which is just setting the text attribute to whatever this function spits out here. So pretty simple example, uh, we are going to dive into a little bit more of a complicated UI and a little bit more of an interesting UI, uh, but I do just kind of want to drive home and introduce the point of uh, live data if you've never seen it before. So as we can see here, when we click the button, we do get a random number that's generated and the UI is updated uh, as we would expect here. So, you know, this is a very simple example. It might not be really driving home the point of MVVM or at least the power of the view model and specifically live data, but hopefully as we start to implement a little more, you'll start to see that. So let's go ahead and just bounce over to our view model class instead um, and actually start to basically uplift the logic and put it inside here. Because right now the main activity is holding all of the logic. The main activity is controlling the UI and obviously the activity or the fragment needs to control the state of the UI. But at the same time, uh, it's not always the activity or fragment's job to manage all of the different logic and the uh, instructions on what the UI should look like. Instead, we'd rather get the view layer, the activity or the fragment to a point where it's just reacting to updates from you know specific data that it receives and then it knows how to construct the UI from that. Uh, so that's exactly what we'll do here as we move over to the uh, view model approach. So inside of our view model here, we will get to creating a live data, but let's just go ahead and paste this function over so that we have the functionality. Uh, and then within here, we're going to create two variables, uh, one being private and one being public here. So we will create the uh, private val, let's say text view info live data. We're going to make this a mutable live data of for now just a string. And then we're going to have an outward facing text view live data with um, that is a public one. This is however going to be a live data of a string. And then we have here, it just points to whatever is inside this mutable live data. So this is also a pretty common pattern um, within the live data. So basically only the view model has access to this internal one here that is the mutable one. So only the view model has the ability to actually change the underlying data that exists in this variable here. And then what is going to be used uh, externally inside of our activity is going to be just the live data instance, which is basically a read only version of uh, this information here. So it doesn't give the activity 
any ability to um, you know change the data itself. It's more it's just basically reactive. Now inside here we do basically need a way to trigger the button clicked event. And so we're just going to create a simple function here that's public on button clicked. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say, well, let's be a little more verbose here. We'll say random text is going to be equal to the get random text. And then inside of our live data, we are going to call post value with the random text that we have here. So this function here we've copied over. It should be pretty straightforward, right? We saw what it does before. And now basically this function inside the view model is what's going to be invoked and it's going to run when we click the button. So we get our random text and then we post the value to this mutable live data here. You'll notice that if we try to just post it to um, the regular live data, it actually doesn't work. The function doesn't exist. So the live data is immutable. The mutable live data is mutable as the name suggests here. But then we see this post value uh, function that we're calling. And although it's actually not necessary because this function is running on the main thread, there's basically two ways to set information inside of a particular live data. And they are right here, the post value or the value equals more or less like a set value kind of function. The only difference between the two of these is that this is basically scheduled to run uh, at some point in the future, whereas this one ends up running immediately when this line of code executes. And what I mean by that is more so around the thread safety uh, and, you know, the context at which this code is being run um, and called from. Post value is useful because if you're doing some operation on a background thread uh, or in a view model scope or some other kind of coroutine scope, you might need to be using the post value so that you can actually make the modifications to um, the live data. But if you're running on the main thread, which in this case we're going to, you can actually just call value equals. Um, so there's just a slight difference here. It really matters where it's running from, but it does the same thing, just setting the actual value to whatever you pass in there. So we're going to stick with the post value just because it's a little bit cleaner, I guess. It's a little bit, um, I don't know, better practice. It's definitely safer, right? This can be called from any thread, whereas the value equals uh, can only be called from the main thread there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, view model dot on button click, right? as we've seen here. Um, inside of the on click listener, we just bubble this event up to the button click uh, to the view model inside this function. And then we do our little posting stuff there. And so here, as we click the button, we can see the UI is actually reacting uh, as we would expect if we hit a little breakpoint here inside of our view model. When the button is clicked, we can clearly see that we do have uh, this function being invoked. We can even see that the random text here, the value is 47. Uh, and we are posting that info to the live data here. So this is working exactly as intended, yet this text is not being changed at the moment. Well, that's because we've kind of, you know, deleted that part from our implementation and we are not observing this live data, um, specifically this one here. So the power of the live data is being able to implement it uh, in more of a like observer pattern uh, that actually also respects the life cycle of whatever view layer, whatever is, uh, you know, uh, attaching itself to the live data. So we can very easily observe this uh, live data here by calling view model dot text view info live data. Again, we can see that is a live data of type string. And then we're going to call observe on it. And this observer function here has two parameters that need to be passed in. The first one is the lifecycle owner. And then the second one is an actual observer, which we're going to implement as a Lambda function uh, attached to this here. So basically the lifecycle owner is the owner of the observer that we are attaching to the live data. Inside of an activity, we can just call this. And that basically means that the lifecycle of this activity is going to basically be the lifecycle of this observer right here, um, which is described as just this Lambda function that's going to run for this particular live data. Now inside here, we can call binding uh, dot text view dot text equals it. Uh, that's because, you know, this little string that's passed in is named it. So let's just let's be a little bit more verbose here and we will just say text because we know exactly what it is. Uh, and then if we go ahead and run this here, the UI should be reacting the same way that we would expect. And clearly, as we can see here, this does uh, react. So 
two different implementations of doing the exact same thing. We're more or less reacting to a button click, some kind of user input. We're propagating that information up to the live, uh, the view model, excuse me. And then we are listening and we are awaiting some changes here or some uh, you know, information that comes about. So I know that this is a simple example, so let's actually spice it up a little bit, make it a little bit more intelligent, and we can do something that's, I don't know, a little bit more fun with this same pattern here. created a data class up here to basically encapsulate some information. So we've named it text view info. It's going to have uh, text as a string, a rotation value as an integer, and then a background color as an integer as well here. Uh, so same action here on button click. We get our random info. We post that to the live data. The live data's type has been changed to be the type of this class. So everything is uh, you know correctly matching up here. And then the get random info function here just generates a random a text view info with random values here. Um, so again, we have the same logic for our string. We have a random integer from 1 to 360 for the rotation. And then we also generate a random color here, uh, which just creates the color.rgb, uh, passing in the different values here for the red, green, and blue attributes all capped at 255. So we are just, you know, randomly generating a color here. Now, if we bounce over to the main activity, this is no longer going to work because it is no longer uh, simply just uh, a string that's being passed back in our observer. So we can go ahead and say info.text here. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate some of this, these lines here. We're going to say rotation equals info dot rotation uh, dot to float because I put it as an integer. And then lastly here, we're going to just say set background color with info dot background color, right? So now we are just propagating a little bit more information here. We, uh, we can clean this up very quickly here by just calling binding dot text view dot apply make it seem a little bit more Kotlin focused. We can go ahead and cut this information here, paste it, and then specifically here, we're just going to delete these lines. And so we can see that we are applying all of these attributes here to our text view. Uh, so hopefully you're following along, but basically we're just generating a little bit more randomness uh, to the UI here, and we are going to print that out, or I guess set it here uh, when we click the button. So as we click, we can see that we now have uh, the, the text view is defined as a square, so this makes sense. Um, but then the rotation is obviously a little, you know, weird. And then a random number here. And as we can kind of just click through, we see a whole bunch of this information changing, uh, very, very much random to it. And um, yeah, we've just kind of basically adapted the basic implementation to provide a little bit more information about our UI. And then the observer here inside the activity knows how to actually handle that that information, the update to the data here, um, and then draws the UI accordingly. So this is a much more reactive approach. And from the activities perspective, it doesn't matter how this live data actually gets generated, how this info gets generated. Um, in this case here, we are simply kind of forcing it to regenerate something on button click, but we could very easily have a timer that every 10 seconds, or not 10 seconds, every 100 milliseconds or something like that, uh, this code runs, regenerates some information, posts it to the UI, and the activity updates accordingly. Um, so if you could follow that kind of thought process there, you can really start to see why the view model and why the live data is just so powerful. Again, all of this would function with the lifecycle awareness. So if I was able to simultaneously click this uh, button and put the app in the background, the updates would stop, the UI would no longer receive uh, changes, the, the observer would not be invoked, and so we wouldn't be modifying the UI in an in invalid state here. Uh, so that is a pretty powerful component, especially when you start adding in networking and that kind of stuff, so that your app just feels a bit more robust and you don't have to worry about 
you know, the management of all those other uh, little edge casey things, it's taken care of for you inside of this live data and observer approach. So sorry if this is a simple example or a silly example, but I do have plans here to basically build out a digital clock that we're going to run with our live data and our observer pattern. And uh, yeah, so if you made it this far in the video, please drop a like. I'd really appreciate the support. If you are brand new, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on diving a little bit deeper into this season, into the live data, and feel free to check out the rest of the channel to kind of get some more information and see what other content is out there. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.